Okay, so today I will uh, talk about three uh, main topics uh, where, let us say, trains and deportation are, as we may say, after the extermination on sich, the deportation is the most important fact uh, from which uh, we have got to make a study. And also try to understand that the extermination uh, couldn't be possible without deportation. So first of all, I'm oh yes, I'm working for the Auschwitz Foundation. So uh, it's a study and documentation center. So for that we have got three pillars. So first of all, the scientific part. Uh, with certainly the uh, international journal, Getuigen, uh, Témoigné. Uh, the last one just uh, came out a couple of days ago. So it's a very good number. I wrote an article, so it must be very good. <laughs> Secondly, the uh, ped pedagogical uh, pillar. So it has no use to have only scientific matter. We also have got to translate it and to present it to uh, pupils, but also teachers. And uh, third, last but not least, the artistic part. So now I will tell you more about, and that's also the introduction for my lecture now, the scientific part and the pedagogical. We have got two study trips uh, now since 1980. We are making an annual study trip to Auschwitz. Uh, but of course, in 2020, 21, it wasn't possible due to a little virus. And uh, this year, it won't be possible due to a larger problem. Our second study trip is uh, on the traces of the Shoah in. Poland. Uh, that's why I want to introduce two projects and also by those projects uh, talk about the deportation and the lecture of today. So the most important thing to understand when we are making a study trip is that there was a deportation, meaning how to get from point A to point B. That's the most important part. For that, that's also the biggest question mark that we can introduce. So, when we have got this symbol meaning for a ghetto, when we are talking about uh, on the traces of the Shoah in Poland, it's meaning where the Jews were gathered, kept together. Uh, in the beginning, there was the ID from uh, the 27th of September 1939. There was a Schnellbrief written by Heydrich with just one question. Can we make not a ghetto, but the Judenräte, so the Jewish councils? Of course, they had in the beginning other IDs, so that was done. But the deportation did not took place. So after uh, almost a year, well, for uh, for example, uh, Piotr Kuf Trebunalski was very fast uh, ghetto. But for example, for the ghetto of Warsaw, uh, it was made a year later. So this is the most important thing to know when in a village, when in a town, the Jews were gathered, then the biggest question raised how to get them from the ghetto to a guest chamber. Of course, as I said before, on uh, the conference of Wednesday, it was mainly the uh, question of Dr. Bula to start with the general gouvernement. Okay. So the answer was very easy. Let us use the trains. And the trains, we have got to understand, there were the rail tracks connecting since the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, the connection made by trains between uh, major towns. And that was used by the 
Nazis. But in fact, we have got to understand that a killing center is going to use it. How? Well, just to make a connection of it, which ends immediately to a certain point. It uh, will end at the uh, killing center. And that's where I found this very interesting definition of a killing center. Located away from villages to avoid prying eyes. Killing centers are moreover railway terminals. And that's very interesting because it starts, for example, for our study trip to Auschwitz, we always come with our group here to Mechelen. And we are visiting the place from the deportation. One, two weeks later, we are standing in Auschwitz. And so we can take over the end of the story told here in Mechelen and pick it up again where they arrive. Because without this information, it's impossible to understand. So, as noticed, for example, for the case of Belgium, passengers' cars were used. But very fast, and mainly in the east, they will switch over to cattle cars. Yeah. Where you can see here, for example, for the extermination of Jews in Chelmno, not Nerem, we see that from passengers' cars, going to the killing center, they are using cattle cars. Here you can see another picture. And with this one, the question that we may ask is, how many people? Well, on the uh, 31st of August, 1942, Wilhelm Cornides uh, wrote the next thing, when he was near Ravaruska. I walked near the train. It was made of 35 cattle cars and one passenger car. Each of these 35 cars contained at least 60 deportees. So, for those who love mathematics, it means that around 2000, 2000 100 people were deported by such a convoy. Here you can see another picture, the deportation from Krakow, from Krakow. And of course, now we can see where they get in the cars. So now we can go on and look at the end. I'm taking the case study of Sobibor. So, where you can see uh, drawn by Don Rosenbaum, this is the killing center. And as you can see, it is not that big, certainly when you compare it with big concentration camps. This is not a camp, this is a killing center. And I will explain why it is important to use the word center. But now let us focus. Everybody is always going or having interest in this part, yeah, where the gas chambers are. But don't forget, without deportation, a killing center cannot function. We are going to focus today on the railway ending, where the train came in where it was over. Those people who arrived over there, an hour, two hours later, it was done. They were stripped, women's hair was cut, they were gassed, golden teeth were put out and they were buried in the first place. So it's this ending and as you can see, Mainly important is, first of all, the use of the trailways which existed. And that's how a killing center, and we will see it when we will uh, get into detail with Treblinka, it's only a connection. 
small connection made between something existing and the idea of extermination. Here you can see so how it must be a convoy which arrived. Mainly this, as we are comparing it with the definition we just read, it is the end of the way. It's done. So, and here you can see the picture taken in Sobibor. So it was actually the end. There was no way back. Only an empty train will get out of the killing center. But for us now, the most important part is to analyze those three killing centers. Uh, Auschwitz, I will take Auschwitz, Birkenau, uh, I will take Treblinka and Beujet. Everybody is aware of this picture. Yeah. And mainly when we are thinking about the extermination, we always think about Arbeit macht frei. No. So it's mostly important to know that the extermination took place near the camp of Birkenau. I think this is very important. I followed the courses of Maxim Steinberg, late Maxim Steinberg, who said it was like a killing center attached to a concentration camp. And that's why it is important to make the separation of those two as I call it, worlds. So the idea of uh, so the idea of uh, Auschwitz was it was a center point for the deportation of the Jews from Europe. As you can see, this part we will speak about later. This was the General Gouvernement. But for Auschwitz, it will take a bigger scale. Why? Four elements are very important. First of all, in Schlesien, there was enough water. There's the uh, Wiswa and the Sowa. The two rivers, water is needed. There was coal present, raw material. The only thing missing is forced labor. So the idea is get centered the deportations and then we need to find a point where we can make the separation between forced labor and let us say those who will disappear immediately into the gas chamber. So this is the uh, plan that we all know. Uh, when uh, in 1942 the deportation took place to Auschwitz, you have got to understand that Birkenau had not already this size. Okay? I will show you later on. But what I want to show you here is between Auschwitz I and Auschwitz II, there was two major platforms used. Not really platforms, but the first one is the rail track going to Auschwitz I, Stammlager, and from 1942 there will be the use of the Alte Rampe, the Judenrampe. That's also where there will be the confrontation between the economic part and the ideological part, between the uh, Verwaltungshauptamt and the Reichssicherheitshauptamt. Yeah. That's where it is very important. So the first, as I mentioned, it's called the uh, yeah, the, the railway from, from the Polacken. Yeah, so it is Auschwitz I, and here you can see just mm -hmm. next to the camp, Stammlager, there is the, what you can see here, the Polacken. Yeah. But very fast it will be not big enough to use anymore for the big transportations. So after it, there will be the use of the so-called Alte Rampe, the Judenrampe. Here you can see how it was. So that's where the deportations came. And something very important was made there. It's called a selection. A selection is 
the procedure which is done and which will make go to one side main part the people to be killed and second part those who will be uh, conserved and used and they will have to not to live but to survive in a concentration camp so the symbol which we can see nowadays is for that um, for that case very important that's also why when we during our study trip are visiting Birkenau Auschwitz II we don't start in front of the camp we start where just as I told you where we ended our story here the other side point B is there uh, now, that, th this is the confrontation between memory and history. So, again, uh, I told you what we know nowadays is a big part of Boabschnitt 2, and even Mexico with everything which is built after it. But in the beginning, March 1942, there was only Boabschnitt 1. So, and with the Judenhampe, so it was the use of bunker one and bunker two, the people who have to go and die, and those who are kept and will be used as forced labor or kept in the camp. But memory didn't uh, retain this. After it, since May 1944, for Action Heuse, the train was immediately let into the camp and uh, that's where the ID remained and the ID for somebody who is visiting Auschwitz this is the only one only thing he will remember as what that the trains came in I think that's only two two, two of the deportations from Belgium so this so Mainly, the Jews who were deported from Belgium to Auschwitz never saw this. They came at the Judenhampe. Okay, I will be killed. So, uh, this is Birkenau. So, how we can see it, these are the, the Neue Rampe, the Bahnrampe. Also, pictures were made. Here you can see one facing the entrance and facing the end, where you can see Crematorium 2 und 3. Okay. And the separation made, so mainly for women, children, elderly, to their death. Okay, I will go a little bit faster. So now, uh, the importance for trains for Treblinka. So as you can see, Treblinka in this general gouvernement was important to understand what is now what Ruhl Hilberg called in chapter 9 of his book, the killing centers. Here you see Treblinka, Warsaw and Białystok. So, and it is really in the center. It's not a word without meaning. No, it is a killing center. It's centering the killing of the Jews. Let us take now the case of the ghetto of Warsaw. When the ID, ID came for the deportation, started on uh, the 23rd of July 1942 to Treblinka, on the northern part of the ghetto, what was used, it's the Umschlagplatz. The people had to go and still intramuros, they need to gather. How many? Well, for Treblinka, it was daily 7,000 Jews. 3,500 in the morning, 3,500 in the afternoon. Not 6,999, not 7,001. It's 7,000 each day. Here you can see some gathering to the Umschlagplatz, where they were kept, and then getting on the train. 
with cattle cars going to Treblinka. But it's not only Treblinka, as you saw on the map. Many towns, villages, uh, deserved Treblinka with their Jews. <coughs> so, important to know is what was existing, existing is Warsaw Mankinia, so as we can see here, going further on to Biavistok. The idea was, okay, there is a train station already at Treblinka, and what was first built was Treblinka 1. It was a labor camp. And only because it was that easy, between Treblinka station and Treblinka 1, there was what is called Treblinka 2, it's the killing center. Oh no. So here you can see, see an ID of Treblinka. Uh, important to know is that uh, since December 1942, von Stangel, so the commandant, built a train station. It's totally useless. No, it was very easy for them. Why? It gave the directions. There was a time schedule. There was everything. Everything for those who arrived to believe, okay, we are not going to die. We see that there is still something living here. There's something real. No, it's only to get those people calm. And as I told you, in two hours, everything was done. Here you can see again a uh, railway stop, the ending. The old train station of Treblinka self, and also the symbolism nowadays is very important. When you visit Treblinka, you can follow the track wheels now with concrete blocks symbolized. You can go to Malkinia. And to end with Baujets. So here again you can see from very far away, and this is also important nowadays when we visit Auschwitz, we are going to Krakow. And in Krakow you can immediately visit the salt mines and you can visit Auschwitz, and the idea is that, okay, the Jews from Krakow were deported and killed in Auschwitz. No, Krakow was the capital of this general gouvernement, and even from Krakow, uh, the deportations and murders took place in Belgium. So again, important was the existing connection between Lviv, Lvov, Lemberg, and Lublin, yeah, with Zamoc. And here, important Ravaruskites, the last point, which is now in Ukraine, uh, going to. Uh, Belgians. I will take now the uh, case study of Lublin. On March 15th, 1942, the Jews were gathered. Two days later, they were deported to Belgians. Here we can see where it was located, where it is now and the new memorial. Because, very important, during our study trip we need to start the story where they left and after it going to where it ended. The old train station which was destroyed in July 44 and the new one which is not on the same spot anymore. Once the train arrived there it is important to notice that it was another officer, a police officer who took over because a killing center, it's maybe the biggest secret they need to keep till the end. So once the train is arriving at the train station of Belgets, there it was took over by Rudolf uh, Glöckel. Yeah, but it was... 
And here again, so a very important map to see. Here the train arrived and after it, here this was the killing center, so there was a little flip over into the center. This is the first stage of Bauchets. There was only place for 10 wagons. So they only worked till uh, till uh, the end of the day. They, they weren't working during night. So when they couldn't handle all the victims arrived at the station, they need to wait over there till the next day. This is a picture made at a, at a painting painted by uh, Kolodziecik. And <clears throat> for this, it's very important to notice, you see, when everybody is arriving, there was a speech. And I would like you to read you very falsely this speech. It was uh, written by Rudolf Reda. You need to know, Belgians had between 550,000 and 600,000 Jews murdered. Only six people could escape. From those six, only two testimonies existing. Chaim Hertzmann and Rudolf Reda. So two out of those 600,000. He's writing this concerning the arrival. So this ID. At this precise moment, the SS took over the train. A big amount opened, uh, opened the doors and shouted, Los, Los. They get the people out of uh, the train by using whips. The unloaded, the unload platform stood one meter lower. So people had to jump, all of them, the sick, elderly people and children. Some broke their legs. The SS under a Zugführer uh, watched over the dead uh, commando, so those Jewish workers, Jewish prisoners dressed normally. They resembled to hear the speech of Ehrmann. A dead silence. Everyone wants to hear. Hope is coming back during the speech. They, they weren't to be killed. Ehrmann said very clearly, You will get showered and then sent to work. That's all. Everybody is happy. They sang and danced. But of course, so after a couple of days of deportation, that was the speech they wanted to hear. But it was, that was not what happened uh, mainly. So the second stage, uh, a big tr um, transformation was the unload platform from 10 to 20 wagons. And it was doubled. So there was place for around 40 wagons each time they need to get over and get retreated. At the end, uh, 12 December 1942, Belgium closed uh, its doors. Till June, till the summer of 1943, there were still Jewish workers who had to incinerate the bodies. And at the end, by those same railway, they were sent to Sobibar. Thank you.